after Kelowna, uh, the leadership, uh, 1.1 billion needed in housing, uh, asked Ontario First Nations Tech Services to do an assessment of uh, housing and infrastructure needs. And in, in, uh, last summer, when they had their annual report, they estimated what is it, 2.5 billion in infrastructure, and about the same amount for for housing uh, needed in just Ontario uh, alone. So. If you're taking a look at Ontario's need, you could probably use all of that $3 billion that's, that's being proposed uh, to be leveraged here. Next slide. One of the first uh, few announced First Nations uh, that we are, have worked with uh, happened to be Atlantic Region First Nations, uh, Con River and, and Member Two. Uh, and uh, the third First Nation is, is Lac La Ronge uh, First Nation. These were the first three approved uh, First Nations to sign on uh, with the fund. It can be used for individual home ownership, and you hear a lot of talk about individual home ownership, uh, which really suggests uh, more and more that individuals should be taking uh, more responsibility for their own loans and mortgages. But our backing could also be used for uh, rental units, and, and there's a way of doing that. Uh, uh, renovations, renovations that are different from CMHC's a uh, wrap program and it goes beyond health and safety that could be used for upgrading your bathroom, redo your kitchen, adding an additional r room or gl granny flat, uh, adding a garage. <coughs> I liked when Grace did the presentation at Attawapiskat and she did shared the uh, the Northern Tribal Council's uh, uh, a plan and, and uh, that plan had a place where you can drag your skidoo in to repair it in the wintertime or cut up your moose meat and the uh, that's really uh, planning to meet the needs of the culture, and I was quite impressed with those, uh, those, those plans. We are not about the First Nations, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Real Properties Act. It, it, this isn't about uh, what we're about. We respect communal ownership of land. Only First Nation governments can apply, not tribal councils, not uh, housing corporations, not uh, the Métis or the Inuit or offers or organizations. And certainly in terms of the access criteria, we did spend uh, a lot of time going around the country, uh, contacting 500 different uh, groups of, of First Nations uh, uh, and individuals to have some input in the access criteria. Next slide, please. <clears throat> when we think of the word market housing, of course, we uh, know full well uh, that uh, on First Nation communities, there is a, a very much limited market uh, when we look at uh, who can buy and sell on, on an Indian reserve. And certainly when we take a look at uh, the whole notion of an Indian reserve, uh, the highest fiduciary responsibility of the federal government is to make sure that the Indian, Indian lands and, or Indians and lands uh, reserved for Indians are, are held uh, uh, intact. And so uh, when we take a look at uh, market-based approach, what we're asking First Nations is to really to take a look at uh, where individuals and, and uh, occupants uh, take more responsibility for the buying, uh, the looking after uh, uh, of their, their houses. Uh, from that perspective, uh, there are all kinds of innovative ways that First Nations are, are taking a look at how this might work in, in their communities. Next slide. <coughs> If there's uh, nothing that you get out of my presentation today, if you understand this one slide uh, <laughs> in its fullest, uh, certainly you will get the gist of how this, this program works. We act as a 10% backstop uh, to First Nation governments uh, uh, who want to uh, do individual uh, uh, First Nation guarantees on individual loans and mortgages. In terms of the backstop, how do we arrive at that? We asked First Nations to do a five-year projection of housing need. And I'm going to be using uh, Moose Cree as an example uh, this afternoon where they did this exercise and uh, their five-year projection of housing need was $18 million. Uh, and certainly when we talk about uh, the benefits of this approach, in Ontario we have uh, three approved lenders that we uh, work with and we're considering adding more lenders uh, down the road, but uh, that's uh, uh, Peace Hills Trust, uh, an Aboriginal financial institution, Bank of Montreal, one of the big five, and a uh, regional credit union, Desjardins, as, uh, as the third option. 
Uh, with those uh, being uh, backed by the fund and being approved lenders of the fund, uh, we are asking that they consider uh, low interest rates on loans and mortgages. By low interest rates, uh, certainly without even negotiating, uh, Bank of Montreal uh, said we'll uh, give uh, 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 interest rates to First Nations based on 50, uh, 50 uh, points below the posted interest rates. Now, uh, Bank of Montreal, uh, because of stiff competition, have come back and said uh, we'll do better than that. We'll do 75 points below the posted interest rate. So what that means is if you have the interest rate at, say, 4%, uh, they are willing to loan uh, your band members 3.25% uh, 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 at a lower interest rate. Desjardins and Credit Union for Moose Cree, <coughs> are, uh, they've uh, negotiated with Moose Cree and uh, they've come in at uh, 1.25 uh, points uh, or 125 points below the posted interest rate. So if it's at 4%, they're getting their mor uh, mortgages and loans at 275 percent interest rate. So not a bad deal for our Moose Creek band members uh, working with Desjardins Credit Union. Right now I know some of the private uh, uh, the private lenders are working with First Nations on some risk in, uh, risk sharing. Uh, Bank of Montreal I know has done that up to 20 percent, 10 percent. We actually had Nishnabek Nation Credit Union before they uh, they went under uh, uh, working with one of our announced First Nations uh, uh, risk sharing at 10%. Uh, we're going to be announcing a new uh, lender in Ontario. Uh, it'll be a Northern Alliance uh, uh, Credit Union out of, out of Hearst. Uh, so those First Nations who work with, uh, with Northern Alliance, there'll be a new uh, lender that we'll be uh, making available. On top of the risk sharing, the low interest rates, some of these lenders are even prepared to lend or to return back for every hundred thousand dollars loan, a thousand a thousand dollars administration uh, arrangements back to the First Nations. So, if you talk about Moose Cree, uh, they will be making out of uh, one eighteen million. I, I forget how that went. One hundred eighty thousand, or is that is it that high? A thousand. Anyways, uh, quite a bit of uh, administration dollars coming back to Moose Cree for all the work they're doing. The interesting thing about us different from other processes is that uh, out of the uh, uh, capacity uh, development uh, th there's an agreement by the trustees to out of the interest earned on the 300 million uh, that we would uh, give back uh, make available to First Nations who apply to us uh, capacity development resources and we have a number of Aboriginal consultants that we work with uh, uh, that provide that services including Roxanne uh, and so that's, that's a, a way to get uh, those kinds of services uh, made available to uh, your First Nation community. Uh, capacity development uh, interest earned uh, currently is, is at about a $9 million. So between CMHC and Indian Affairs on any given year, uh, we're uh, two or three times more than Indian Affairs is at in terms of capacity development uh, resources available. First Nations sets the rules. We certainly encourage First Nations to understand uh, what they're getting into before they develop those rules, and that's why we make capacity development available. Uh, certainly in terms of the types of borrowers, uh, you want to make sure that uh, those are individuals who can afford to pay, uh, understand what being a, a homeowner is, uh, understand what being a renter is in, 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 in that regard, Loan characteristics, uh, certainly in terms of the uh, consideration by CMHC, Indian Affairs, generally uh, there is a consideration to look at 15-year uh, mortgages, 40-year mortgages. The trustees have opted for a 25-year mortgage, similar to CMHC. Uh, what we're asking First Nations to consider is this approach that they uh, develop a land tenure. You heard the same comment by Ken uh, this morning saying, there needs to be some security for the member who's paying for this house that they will own the house, will be able to pass on their house, or at some point maybe sell the house to a, another band member. Next slide. It isn't, uh, as I mentioned, just about individual First Nation members. Uh, certainly housing authorities as a, an entity could uh, 
uh, get into uh, this, and certainly this fits into the model of housing as a business. Uh, when we take a look at that consideration for approach, for those that don't have housing authorities uh, and want to do rental units, uh, we ask that they use their development corporation. Uh, and I, I'm really pleasantly surprised to hear that there's a greater interest in uh, First Nations wanting to create uh, housing en entities or housing authorities or take the responsibility of housing away from uh, uh, chief and council uh, as a department and begin running it more and more as, as, a, as a business. In some cases, we've noticed there's an interest in pooling uh, some of this uh, interest through tribal councils. And so when we talk about partnering with uh, First Nation entities or individuals, uh, so long as the First Nations owns majority share, uh, you know, I think we haven't crossed that bridge in terms of whether a tribal council or a group of First Nations would be eligible, but certainly I keep uh, asking, uh, you know, is there a way to make this work in terms of a multi-community approach? Uh, and, and, you know, that's uh, sort of when I hear uh, groups of First Nations, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, uh, Meshkigawak, and uh, Nan were talking about a, a, a corporation doing this and handling housing for First Nation communities. Uh, certainly our, our consideration is, uh, you know, let, let's see how that model works and can we support uh, that model. Certainly from our perspective, we work with individual First Nation governments who must guarantee these loans, uh, but certainly in terms of managing housing in and of itself, we're asking that if they're rentals, that that be a sort of somebody other than the First Nations so that there isn't a conflict of being a guarantor and being the beneficiary of, of the guarantee as well. Next slide. It really surprised me when I, 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 I made this presentation to the NAN chiefs last August and I suggested to the NAN chiefs, uh, you have a lot of community workers, professional community workers who who require housing in your communities for which you don't have any available houses available. You have your school teachers, your, your community nurses or healthcare staff, you have your police officer, your NAPS police officers. How are these uh, uh, community workers uh, being supported in terms of, of housing? We know uh, in the old days, INAC used to build teachers, uh, but we're hearing now they don't build those as much anymore. So there is an economic opportunity for First Nations to do housing for uh, people who can afford to pay housing uh, and, and get into that program. And certainly that perked up the years of the NAPS uh, organization to say yes, and we are willing to enter into a, a, a payroll deduction plan with, uh, with our officers to make this work for them to, to go into the, pro into the program. Uh, we've opened the door for refinancing units. Some of the First Nations have private lender agreements or revolving loan agreements uh, that are something like uh, 6% uh, when they started out, maybe have not gone lower than 6% because they're making money off of those revolving loans, or uh, as a result of negotiating a better interest rate are interested in maybe uh, refinancing some of their old agreements under the new, new program. Uh, it might be the same lender even. Uh, so in, in this regard, refinancing uh, for, for renovation purposes has been added. Uh, and uh, we know some First Nations have uh, said we have band members who maybe not be eligible for, uh, based on the bank's criteria, could we develop a rent to own program for them? And so this is a way for First Nations to consider those who have the money to pay for uh, uh, their rent, but really are not credit worthy enough uh, that they be considered for maybe a rent to own program de designed by the First Nation. Next slide. All amortization, uh, amortized loans, uh, certainly we don't want to add uh, individual uh, lines of credit or uh, 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 credit for other things like skidoos or trucks or anything else in terms of the backing of these uh, loans and mortgages. And you'd be surprised when we looked at some of the uh, private lender agreements, how that was possible to do that, that the First Nation could actually be ba backing more than just a, a housing loan when you read the, the fine print. Uh, maximum loan amortization period, I, as I mentioned, is 25 years, but no minimum period. I use myself as an example. I built my own house on the res, uh, uh, section 10, uh, put a lot of my own money uh, in for down payment and took out a 10-year mortgage and, and paid that off. Uh, now, 
my wife wants, wanted an addition after I paid that off and she uh, talked me into another 10 year loan for an addition of, of 600 square feet. And yet I was able to keep the mortgage payments up to around $400 a month, so still very affordable uh, in terms of making that, that work. I heard other First Nations uh, in other communities saying, yes, we're doing something like that, and we're only uh, keeping it down to like $250 a month. So if there's a way to make this program affordable uh, while uh, you're considering this option, certainly uh, the more equity you put into it, the more uh, sweat equity, if, if you're thinking that that's a way to do it. I know some of the lenders recognize sweat equity and some of them don't, but certainly in terms of making this approach uh, more affordable, certainly that goes a long way to making those payments a lot more easy to handle. Fixed and variable rates, uh, for some uh, right now who are shopping around, they are, are looking at, uh, at, at variable rate. Uh, most uh, will tell you that you, know, you should fix in your rates for as long as possible while they're low, uh, but as they go, uh, start to go back up again, uh, certainly uh, that could work against you in terms of a, a variable rate. I use my, myself uh, and my daughter, we bought a house off reserve. She was able to get a loan at the Bank of Nova Scotia for around 2%. She renewed it for another six months, hoping uh, that we'd be able to refinance, uh, and now it's around 3%. And so she's uh, 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 starting to lose money on that, uh, on that consideration. Next slide. A lot of uh, First Nations uh, say uh, that uh, they have a certificate of possession system uh, working now in their First Nations. Uh, some are interested in uh, developing First Nations uh, uh, land management codes that are eligible uh, or equivalent to the uh, First Nations Lands Management Act uh, framework. Uh, and certainly in terms of others are, are telling us uh, we uh, want to develop a land management system but don't necessarily want to go either way, the CP system or the, uh, the First Nations Lands Management Act system. And, and from our perspective, uh, uh, what we're looking at here is uh, working with those uh, First Nations that are uh, working with non-designated lands. If the land was designated, certainly the backing of the fund wouldn't be needed, uh, but certainly uh, you'd still have the major barrier of the Indian Act uh, on those uh, non-designated lands asking again that the, the, the land tenure system uh, be, tenure be longer than the amortization of the, the loan. Next slide. We know from uh, recent history that uh, the provinces uh, and, and the federal government has just updated their, their, uh, their uh, construction standards. Uh, ever since uh, Canada's economic action plan, a lot of First Nations were able to upgrade their houses to the Energuide 80 standard. Uh, we've also heard that the Assembly First Nation is doing a special initiative with Mike Holmes on the uh, Tikamikshing First Nation or Whitefish Lake First Nation where they're even looking at a higher uh, energy efficiency standard for those homes there. And I think what we're looking and hearing at, uh, from uh, the people who are looking at these standards, does it cost a heck of a lot more to uh, increase the standards? And I think from the technical perspective, they're saying it could cost anything, uh, where anywhere, uh, le only about two or three percent more to reach a higher level of standard than the national building code exists now. So that tells me that you could still build more energy efficient house and not uh, spend as much money uh, as a lot of people think that you may have to spend, and, and especially with some of the new technologies. Uh, one thing we heard from the consultation uh, on the fund is that uh, uh, much like in, 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 in municipalities uh, where you see uh, multi-dwelling units or individual uh, units, uh, uh, that 20% of the uh, space uh, is used for uh, other than residency. You, you take a look at an apartment building, the first floor has maybe a, a uh, a craft, uh, a, uh, a convenience store, or a laundromat, or a gymnasium, or a workout room, and so uh, I think what we're we're looking at in, in our instance here is if a band member wants to use part of their house for uh, a small business, for example. And I'm not talking about everybody getting into the smoke shop business, but certainly that's the the, the laugh I get every time I mention that. Uh, all of the houses uh, must be. Uh, uh, inspected by professional inspectors. We've entered into our arrangement with three tribal councils 
uh, for their NISI inspectors to do the inspection for these uh, new uh, proposed units. Uh, and certainly uh, they've said, uh, well, we do this uh, with an arrangement for CMA with CMHC. Uh, where does the funds come from to pay for these inspection units? Uh, and uh, these, uh, the funding for that comes from uh, the mortgages themselves as part of the cost of the mortgage. I heard uh, Pat Madabi say this morning that they had struck a deal with uh, Bank of Montreal uh, that the uh, surveying of those lots would all, could also be included as part of the cost of the loan or mortgage. That's fairly significant. Uh, by the way, just to let you know, uh, the $9 million interest uh, that got earned for capacity development between the two uh, uh, deputy ministers uh, of CMHC and Indian Affairs, uh, uh, the fund will also cover the cost of, of uh, surveying of lots as well on new, uh, new construction. Next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the access criteria. Next slide, please. And uh, how we base it on, uh, certainly, uh, if anybody has ever seen our, our, uh, our application forms, it's about a three-sided, uh, 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 double-sided uh, application form. There's about 12 questions on there that uh, get asked. And they relate to these three areas, three pillars. Uh, good financial management is what we're looking for in a First Nation good governance uh, and a community commitment uh, or demand for, for this approach. And the First Nation uh, decides how best they, they fill each of those principles. I, I tell First Nation housing managers, when you take a look at this, don't be intimidated by the application process. I've helped First Nation do an application in less than an hour, as well as do a self-assessment on capacity development uh, needs as well. And, and certainly from that perspective, uh, uh, what we're looking for in terms of good financial management, you've done a five-year projection of housing need. So what we're going to ask you is to take a look at three to five years audit financial statements to see if you can safely, safely back that five-year of uh, projected need in your community. So what we're looking for is uh, own source revenue, working capital, and certainly want to be sure that you're managing those finances uh, uh, as well as, as uh, you are now. I don't know what happened to our... Uh, our presentation there. <laughs> Don't look at me, Peter says. <laughs> uh, when we talk about First Nations uh, uh, good management, uh, certainly uh, we want to know who is working in, in, in finance, uh, how long have they been working there, what, what qualifications do they have uh, while working in there. Uh, uh, we will do a credit check on the First Nation uh, and, and certainly in terms of the credit check, that'll tell us if there are any lawsuits against the First Nation, uh, how often you're, uh, uh, you're, do you pay your bills on time. Uh, and and the, uh, in terms of good governance, I want to make sure there is a separation of uh, administration from, uh, uh, from chief and council. We're looking for accountability, transparency, uh, and uh, communication with your band members, reporting to your band members on... Uh, uh, activities in, in, the, in the program. Uh, certainly we're going to be looking at your housing program as well. We want to see if there in fact is a rental regime operating in the, in the community now. And this is an area where a lot of First Nations say we are having the biggest problem uh, in, in the community in terms of, of, of having rental arrears needed to look at rental arrears management. And uh, they tell us if you want to get into this program, and, and I'm saying this on a not looking at your history, but on a go-forward basis, uh, we need to do a, a major education shift of our band members in terms of getting used to the idea of paying uh, rents and mortgages. And so this is where we, we have agreed to focus a lot of our capacity development on just doing that, community awareness, community education, uh, community members' uh, uh, understanding of what it means to be a, a renter in the community. And so, uh, although, you may be eligible for uh, five years of, of uh, backing by the fund. Certainly a lot of communities who are eligible have stated that they will uh, want to do this capacity development with their band members before they even step down that road of actually going into, into that area. It doesn't take a heck of a lot to uh, 
back uh, a lot of housing in, in the community. In the example, uh, and in, in the kits, uh, if you have your kits in front of you, uh, on page uh, seven of my presentation, uh, we calculate uh, the uh, we calculate uh, the application based on uh, on how how well uh, you are doing in terms of your finances, and, and certainly how well you're running your housing program, and we uh, uh, sort of uh, use uh, our, our own uh, way to figure if you're if. You, you need to set aside any monies for your five-year projection of housing need. Uh, and certainly, if you're a satisfactory community, we would ask that you set aside uh, 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 18 months of principal and interest. And if you're a strong community, uh, 12 months of principal and interest. And certainly, in terms of the, uh, the default rate, if you're a satisfactory, uh, they figured uh, that uh, you know, your default rate could be uh, 8%, as high as 8%, uh, strong community 4%. Uh, it's surprising when we hear uh, from Indian Affairs review of the 1996 Indian Housing Program in terms of the Minister Loan Guarantee that they've had uh, reported less than 1% default in the, the Minister Loan Guarantees. And we know why that is, is because First Nations are honoring their obligations to their lenders and paying those mortgages for their band members uh, and, uh, and covering them off that way. The lenders have, have said the same thing less than 1% default rate with their agreements with First Nations. Now, that's not talking about the agreements with the individuals where we know there are defaults happening in greater percentages. And there's a difference between a, a, a default rate between one who is a renter versus one who is a homeowner because they're dealing directly with the bank versus dealing with the ban. Uh, and so you uh, uh, off reserve, they calculate that at 50% default rate and, and with the lender uh, as high as 30% default rate. But $100,000 uh, will actually, if you're a strong community, get you'll be able to leverage $6.6 .6 million worth of financing. And so when I say you don't need a lot of money uh, to make this program work in your community, uh, certainly when, when, when we take a look at this particular approach uh, and your five-year projected needs, uh, uh, working capital, own source revenue uh, re really uh, helps uh, First Nations say, we can do this. So when we go into that particular process, uh, on the top of page eight, we actually enter, enter into formal agreements with uh, the First Nation. Uh, with that, the first is an indemnity agreement that we uh, sign with the First Nation. In Moose Cree's case that I'm gonna be sharing with you uh, in, a, in a while, uh, $18 million, we've set aside $1.8 million uh, of the 300 million for that community. We've signed uh, our first agreement uh, with them, the indemnity agreement, saying that they will take responsibility for loans and mortgages. They enter into an agreement with uh, the lender. In their case, it's going to be Desjardins, uh, uh, and agree to do uh, guarantees with them. We enter into a separate agreement with Desjardins, based on the 18 uh, million, to say that we will back that 18 million by, uh, by 10%. And then from there, uh, the band member goes to the lender, gets a, a loan or a mortgage, uh, uh, based on their, their project, their, their house, their renovation, and then they come to the uh, band for the guarantee, which goes to the, the lender. So we've now established a few templates with First Nations who are into this credit uh, enhancement facility uh, with uh, 23 First Nations across the country. Their five-year projection is uh, 30, $335 million of uh, private sector financing, uh, of which we have, are now uh, backing 33.5 million. But that's money that is uh, not coming from the federal government. Uh, and certainly in terms of uh, taking a look at that, able to do uh, a lot more housing that the federal government uh, can afford to do at this time. That's sort of uh, how it works. Uh, but certainly from our, my perspective, and I'm really uh, unfortunate that the, the PowerPoint doesn't work here. Uh, just in terms of talking about capacity development, I, I wanted to share some examples uh, uh, with you. The, the credit enhancement is a separate agreement away from the, uh, the, the, 
the capacity development is a separate ag agreement away from the credit enhancement. It's a three-year agreement uh, with the fund, and uh, certainly in terms of the process, when you do apply, uh, we come back to your community and do a, a, a senior management uh, capacity development work plan. And this is where you begin to identify your weaknesses, your areas that you want to strengthen, the policies you want to uh, uh, redo, whether it's housing, administration, finance, the training that you want to put in place for your staff, whether that's finance, housing, uh, technical, uh, or uh, training with your committees or, or band members. Uh, and certainly in, in terms of taking a look at, at that, what we're hoping uh, that we'll be able to deliver uh, through our capacity development is to really upgrade the, the regulatory uh, framework of the, the First Nation government. And, and when I take a look at the overall process that this does to a First Nation, we're really strengthening uh, the First Nation to be ready for more uh, investments other than investments for, for housing. The application process is the self-assessment for capacity development where you identify those priorities. Uh, we develop that work plan with you and then we sign this letter of agreement for up to three years. Uh, we have put uh, more than 25 First Nations uh, through the, uh, the uh, 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 Aboriginal Finance Officers uh, Association training towards their CAFM designation. In fact, Moose Cree uh, Jill, the finance person, is one of our first graduates of that program. <laughs> and, uh, and I think now we've done uh, uh, Abenaki's uh, customized ACPAC training uh, in a lot of communities. And we've sent Roxanne Harper to a lot of First Nations uh, and that are demanding uh, that she uh, go into. And, and so Roxanne needs at least six months uh, lead time before she'll even consider a new community for the schedule. Uh, we've uh, done something interesting with one of the First Nations. They said their senior manager uh, needed to have be better uh, uh, public speakers to their band members. So we op offered a Toastmasters uh, program for the senior managers in that community. Uh, we've also, uh, in terms of taking a look at outside of housing, we provided uh, water and sewer installation uh, technical training for some band members in terms of uh, uh, water, gas, and oil technical training. This was provided through uh, Conn College here in Thunder Bay. Uh, through for First Nations in Northwestern Ontario. Uh, just to speak a little bit about our success uh, to date, uh, we're up to 59 First Nations that have uh, uh, made application to the fund. And I'm thinking before the end of the week, it'll be 60 First Nations. Uh, and, and certainly when we're taking a look at that, that I had mentioned the 23 applications uh, 17 of them were, have only been gotten funded just for capacity development, working their way towards credit enhancement. And we're uh, up to seven approved lenders, two national and uh, five regional, hoping to add an eighth regional lender here in Ontario, uh, Northern uh, uh, Alliance Credit Union. Uh, and, and certainly when we take a look at the, the numbers across the region in that little flag there on page 12, you can see Ontario has 28 First Nations in the, you know, added to their numbers. And uh, I don't know if that's because of my selling job here in Ontario or the greater interest in Ontario, but our next big target is going to be at British Columbia. Uh, uh, that number says eight there. We've already added two First Nations in BC just uh, in the last little while. The benefits of the fund, uh, again, uh, it, it's, it's optional. Uh, certainly will uh, expand uh, your options for your band members. It complements the existing uh, program uh, and uh, attracts more private financing, encourages competition among lenders, as I, as I mentioned. No minister loan guarantee by, and I mentioned no minister loan guarantee not because it's a bad thing, it's just how quickly do you want to do housing in First Nation communities, and certainly sometimes there are a lot of strings attached with a minister loan guarantee. If you didn't do last year's reports, no minister loan guarantees for this year. Uh, and so in terms of taking a look at uh, fiscal year, uh, certainly we are not restricted by the, uh, uh, the fiscal uh, 
uh, year or the approval of budgets. Once we, you are approved, you've got the time to build uh, on uh, uh, the time frame that works uh, for you. Uh, no fees or services for what we do. Uh, we strengthen your, your people, uh, your policies, and your procedures. And again, uh, tools are available to improve your investment readiness across the board for other projects like schools, uh, infrastructure, water and sewer. Uh, land tenure is a key feature of a sustainable approach. Uh, and certainly, uh, we're here to support your First Nations goals. That really is the, the summary of what I wanted to share with you. But more excitingly, I wanted to share with you an individual community and how they've been able to do this. But I don't know what's happening with the PowerPoint here. Do you have any questions up to this point? Yes? First Nation government guarantees the loan uh, for, if it's rental units, for the housing corporation. If it's individuals, uh, it would be guaranteeing the individual's request. The first, the individual? The community's uh, credit rating isn't good. Uh, certainly in terms of our assessment process, you, uh, uh, we would assess whether in fact you can uh, successfully support your five-year uh, housing projection. In, in our view, uh, you, we felt you couldn't. Uh, certainly, we would uh, uh, suggest that you take advantage of our capacity realm to strengthen those areas that need to be strengthened. Uh, Third-party management uh, would be considered a, a higher risk. Uh, we've looked at some co-managed uh, First Nations, some First Nations that are under remedial management plans, uh, but certainly we've never turned down a First Nation because they were in third party for capacity development. Uh, well, that suggests to me that uh, the First Nation maybe isn't ready for this particular approach because they aren't managing the housing portfolio. And uh, certainly in terms of the cause of that being the, the defaulted loans, uh, then you have to say, uh, uh, will this work for me? Uh, because of, this is new to the north, I, I think there is a, a considerable interest in how do I make this work in a, in a northern isolated community. And certainly now we're, we're with uh, some examples that we are, are working with. Uh, we're, we're trying to take a look at a northern approach to, to housing. And certainly when we're taking a look at that consideration, uh, some of the communities are saying, can I make this work with uh, labor dollars with uh, SAF, SATF uh, dollars, uh, with uh, um, you know, with something like a Habitat for Humanity approach, uh, where you know you you're only getting a loan for the materials, and, and we're, the labor is provided some other way. So, you know, I think in terms of taking uh, addressing the question of affordability, uh, certainly communities are doing it already in a lot of ways, uh, but now when we're taking a look at at, at, at this approach. Uh, uh, would they do much better with uh, lower interest rates? Certainly, the option available for the band members is still uh, the Section 95 and the Section 10. Uh, and, and, and a private lender uh, agreement, if a private lender would agree to work with you. Uh, but certainly, from our perspective, we would uh, really say, can this First Nation safely uh, undertake uh, this approach uh, with those band members? If they had, if they had a demonstrate uh, ability that you already have a lot of band members who are doing this, are paying for their own houses, 
and we, uh, you know, and that looks like a rental regime uh, in place, functioning and working, uh, then we would we would say yes, there is int interest, and, and there are some safeguards. I forgot to mention something very important about how does a First Nation reduce their risk in this whole process, and one of the ways. Uh, is for the First Nation to consider uh, mortgage loan insurance. Uh, mortgage loan insurance uh, uh, is, uh, uh, there's two places you can get mortgage loan insurance in Ontario. One is through CMHC and the other one is through GE Capital. Uh, it, it certainly uh, what, what that means is that the lender uh, will apply for mortgage loan insurance. CMHC will provide the mortgage loan insurance and if you have a default on that loan the insurance will cover 100% of that uh, that loan, uh, and certainly, uh, but will uh, because of the insurance, they will uh, uh, pay 70% uh, of that uh, monies to 30% uh, uh, of that that money will be covered by the insurance. 70% will still be paid for by the uh, will still be owed to them by by the First Nation. Now, in terms of the, the backing of the fund, they'll also come back uh, to the fund for 10%, which may be 100% of one loan. So if you have a, a, a million dollars loan, 10% is $100,000. You might have one band member that's defaulted that the First Nation uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't back. And so we would come back and pay out the bank and, and, the, uh, and if they've assigned that, more, uh, that loan to the loan insurance, pay out the uh, the insurer. So there's a, there's a way that we protect First Nations uh, as well, but certainly we wouldn't give any more loans to that First Nation if that ever occurred. So we're hoping the First Nation, when they enter this program, will, will honor uh, the, their agreement to back those, those loans and mortgages for their members. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Does it have to be 25 years? Is is, that, is your basic question? It doesn't have to be 25 years. It doesn't have to be 25 years. Uh, the maximum is 25 years. Uh, you could uh, you, uh, a rental could be like five years. Uh, uh, I mean, a uh, renovation could be five years. Uh, uh, a rental could be 10 years. A rental could be 15 years. Um, um, an individual mortgage could be 10 years five years, 15 years. It, it really depends on, on how, how, uh, what the band member can afford to pay. If you had a mortgage for, uh, I don't know what the, the example you would use in your community, 150,000, what would be the, uh, the monthly payment on, a, on that? About $1,000 per month? 25 years, 750 per month, uh, and if you went less than that, then the mortgage would be higher. Uh, if you went 15 years, it would be uh, higher than that 750. And I guess the question would be, what can you, that band member afford to pay? And if they can afford to pay higher, uh, certainly that would be, and if that's acceptable to the bank, to the individual. And if it's acceptable to them, then the ban would have to just guarantee it based on that, that particular term. They won't go with less than 25 years. Yeah. M most, uh, well, I, I don't know. I, the ones that we've been dealing with, they're pretty open. They're pretty flexible. Uh, they'll go with whatever the First Nation and the individual uh, chooses to set that arrangement. I know Bank of Montreal, they're prepared to look at 10-year mortgages, 15-year uh, mortgages. Uh, I, I know uh, CMHC's Section 95, they're insisting on the 25 years, uh, no higher, no lower. Uh, and that seems to be an okay arrangement if, if you're getting the subsidy for that period and that, that, you know, you're subsidizing that for the period of mortgage. But you might have a band member who says, I'm young, I'm working, I can afford to pay more now, I want this paid off before I reach retirement. So 
I think that's flexible enough for the bank and the, and the borrower to arrange under, under our program. Yes? Under the Indian Act, you're correct. The federal government owns the land, not even the chief and council own the land. This is where the First Nation guarantee comes into play. Uh, they're, uh, they're giving the loan on the strength of the guarantee. And what the, by the strength of the guarantee, they will be doing the same dil due diligence that we're doing in terms of saying, can you safely back these loans and mortgages for your band members? So they will want to see the same thing that we are asking for, the audit financial statements for at least three years. Uh, with that, that tells them they, can, they have the uh, ability to back these loans and mortgages by looking at your own source uh, revenue working capital. Could we put on the Moose Cree uh, presentation? As, as much as it could be yours under the Indian Act, which is the Certificate of Possession. You, yeah, that's as high as you can go in terms of owning that property. <laughs> no, you know, well, uh, uh, the Certificate of Possession is permission to occupy that piece of land where your house sits on. Uh, a lot of communities uh, have a, a lot of transactions using the Certificate of Possession system. Uh, you can gain more control of handling uh, that CP system uh, by taking that responsibility away from Indian Affairs through the First Nations Lands Management Act. Uh, but, uh, but ultimately, it's still a federal crown land or, or a reserve set aside for the use and benefit of First Nations. Now some say under, as far as they're concerned, they own the land, <laughs> lock, stock, and, and barrel, and uh, they'll decide on, on the rules they set for land tenure. Uh, some are doing it quite simply by bank council resolution, and if that's acceptable to the homeowner, acceptable to council, acceptable to the lender, certainly uh, we wouldn't be standing in a way of saying that's not acceptable to us. We wouldn't say it must be this or it must be that. That's the goal. Yeah. So when I use Moose Cree as the example, uh, this is a community that is quite old uh, by community standards in that they've had contact with, uh, with uh, Europe uh, going back to the 1600s when the first uh, trading post, uh, fur trade trading post was set up in their territory. In fact, the term factory comes from the one who looks after the trading post uh, on, the Moose, on the Moose River territory. Next slide. And this community uh, is at the bottom of, of James Bay. Uh, and certainly when we considered our approach to this community, uh, we were quite happy uh, that this community had decided to take advantage of uh, utilizing the fund. And I'll tell you right now, we have spent $400,000 in capacity development, upgrading their administration policies, their finance policies, uh, their housing policies, uh, training their, their staff on how to be aware, uh, doing uh, leadership training uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, those policies, as well as community information sessions for their band members in terms of what does it mean to be a homeowner. So you can see from uh, uh, where this community is, is at, uh, I, I would say uh, not, not just uh, isolated, but certainly uh, away from mainstream, mainstream Canada. Next slide. Next slide. It is an island. Uh, uh, you can only get there by uh, boat uh, or, or, or truck in the, in the main. Uh, my understanding is uh, certainly from that this community uh, they uh, have done some uh, things uh, differently and, and unique in terms of their, their development. 
uh, and certainly in terms of uh, different and unique. Uh, uh, certainly uh, we have been able to come in and take a look at their housing strategy and update their housing strategy going not just five years uh, down the road, but more like 10, 15 years down the road. And one of the interesting things they're having to grapple with is, uh, is, uh, is, is their land tenure system. Uh, they have, uh, they have uh, I don't know if some communities have this problem, but they have uh, veterans during the World Wars that were given land, and now their families are insisting that, uh, that, that they own those lands. And chief and council at some point have to make some decisions around uh, those those veteran lands. And, and certainly from this uh, picture, you can see that uh, 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 it is uh, a community uh, contained, surrounded by water, uh, and, and uh, uh, isolated as far as uh, the definition of isolation is concerned. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, Air Quebec operates in, in Moosonee. Uh, if ever, anybody has ever flown up there, uh, it's not Bearskin Airways, it's not Wasaya, uh, but Air Quebec. Uh, and certainly Air Quebec is a First Nations owned uh, uh, airline company like, like Wasaya. Uh, and, and certainly the communities of the James Bay Coast uh, uh, certainly uh, make plenty use of, of uh, their airline. Uh, it's uh, uh, also the one that goes all the way up to uh, Pewanik, uh community, and so if you're traveling up that way, this would be most likely be your mode of transportation, as well as railway into into Moosonee. Uh, you've heard uh, the story about Attawapscat, where they got the 22 uh, modular homes. Two of them were delivered just this week, uh, and certainly in, in terms of the rest of them, uh, they got there by by uh, by rail up to Moosonee. Three, three got delivered. Uh, by rail, and they're going up on the winter roads from there to to Attawapiskat. Next slide. I've been there both summer and winter, um, uh, and had the pleasure of riding uh, those uh, uh, those boats uh, as well as uh, driving over by by truck. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see from this picture that uh, uh, they really make use of their 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 waterways uh, and and. Uh, a lot of people have uh, do their hunting, their goose camp uh, hunting, uh, uh, in, in, in using uh, those those uh, those those big uh, canoes as as their main mode of transportation. Next slide. So, uh, Moose Factory says that they've occupied the, the this territory for a number of years. Uh, if anybody has ever seen their traditional territory, it's the uh, Moose River uh, water basin that goes all the way down to uh, the city of Timmins and has a, a, a lot of, uh, you know, they still have a lot of uh, traditional lands that are occupied by their band members uh, in those traditional lands, uh, whether you call them uh, trap, trapping uh, cabins or, or what, but certainly if people live uh, literally on those lands uh, 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 and use those lands uh, outside of the community. So in that sense, uh, uh, we're uh, anticipating that uh, any development that goes on in the community, they would want to make sure that they would have a say in any of those developments, whether that's mining, uh, hydroelectric project, and so uh, uh, this statement here in terms of the uh, living on that land really speaks to their, their connection to the land. Next slide. Established in Moose Factory area since 1673. That's long before <laughs> the United States was considered a, a government. Uh, and certainly, um, um, there's some people in in um, in, in Scotland uh, who come back and trace some of their uh, their roots in this area because of the connections to the and and. Uh, uh, it, what they're looking for, of course, is some remnants of old culture. And by old culture, they're talking about Scottish fiddle music. Uh, and so that tradition from brought over by those, those people who came uh, way back when uh, has been picked up by the, the, uh, the Cree people in the area and, and kept it alive. Uh, so that now the people in Europe or in Scotland are coming back to relearn some of those things from our, our people or those people there. 
So he's telling us the, how the term Moose Factory comes in, into play from the, the Hudson's Bay era, uh, where the officer in charge is referred to as the factor. Uh, so you don't actually uh, manufacture moose there. It's a, it's, a, it's a different term. Next slide. So the total population, uh, as you can see, is pretty close to 4,000 people with 1,700 uh, living off reserve and uh, certainly from our look at the profile of the community we recognize that they are looking at needing to build houses uh, uh, for a lot of people who are wanting to move back home uh, over the next little while and uh, sort of they have their, 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 their experience of building their own seniors home uh, but in terms of taking a look at their, their need uh, right now uh, they also have a growing uh, youth population in the community that uh, are requiring new housing uh, and certainly in, in terms of that whole experience uh, uh, they are, are gearing up for uh, a major uh, housing uh, development in their region. Next slide. 450 housing units on reserve and a backlog of 225 uh, units uh, by itself. Uh, in terms of the, uh, they say their land is quite large, 17 hectares, uh, and largely unpopulated. So although I mentioned that that, that island seemed to be the main community, uh, by this slide you can see where they've got some lands that they could uh, develop further on. Next slide. So in the short term, uh, the council has shown a keen interest in addressing the shortage of housing through uh, upgrades. Uh, uh, and certainly they were like you, uh, took advantage of the Canada's Economic Action Plan. But even with the Action Plan, certainly uh, recognized that the, a lot of their houses uh, needed, uh, needed renovations. Uh, right now we're in the, the midst of uh, doing uh, an application of three band members through Desjardins Credit Union to build houses this spring. Uh, and certainly in, in terms of the that whole consideration. We've trained the staff, we put the policies in place, and we're now geared up and ready to start working with implementing those policies based on what uh, the work we've done. And certainly the lender has bent over backwards to go into the community uh, to make uh, them aware of how uh, the, the loans and mortgages will work for them. They're having a session next week on the 23rd and 24th with the lender, uh, with us and their band members in terms of uh, understanding how this program works. Next slide. Their economy, uh, as you can see, uh, is based on uh, the band being the largest employer, which is the case in many First Nation communities. But they do have a tourism uh, a sector that comes there. Uh, the, the, they call it the bush economy. Uh, the pr private uh, businesses, uh, the, there, are a lot of, there is one major uh, store there uh, that, uh, that I'm aware of, as, as well as a lot of uh, convenience stores. Uh, construction companies as well, a lot of band members who are in the construction business. Uh, and certainly in terms of the other ventures, uh, their goal is Im improving the economic outlook for their band members. Next slide. And, and this, is, uh, I, this is the reality of those, those ventures that they're working on. The Ontario Power Generation, I understand they've signed a multi-year agreement with them in terms of getting revenues from that particular development. Uh, as well as uh, Detour Gold and De Beers uh, Diamonds. Uh, they've just built a, uh, an interesting uh, uh, lodge uh, for their tourism trade there. It's uh, being run separate from the, the band. Uh, and certainly if you've ever been to Moose Band, there's that one uh, lodge that uh, Mo Quebec operates there. And, uh, and uh, anybody who's ever stayed there, uh, uh, that's where they usually stay when they go to the island. And so. Washoe Lodge would be a similar type of uh, lodge available for, uh, for the tourist trade. We've been in there for 18 months now. Uh, we've done this work uh, with them uh, in terms of uh, uh, upgrading uh, their regulatory environment uh, and certainly in terms of uh, uh, making uh, more loans available uh, to purchase or renovate uh, or build new. Uh, certainly our goal is that the, this $18 million worth of housing will happen over the next uh, five or six years 
and certainly now they're as equipped as they'll ever be in terms of uh, making it work uh, smoothly for their, their band members. They want to do, uh, develop their own separate housing authority. Uh, they uh, have already started on the training and the workshops. Uh, they recently purchased some uh, housing software for which we have agreed to provide the training on. Uh, they're looking, much like Garland has mentioned, expansion to off-reserve. They have a large number of their band members who live in the city of Timmins. Uh, in terms of uh, Moose Creek properties, that's uh, being transferred uh, uh, to housing uh, to administer, and now their staff will have the ability to adequately manage uh, Moose Creek uh, properties as well. Next slide. Capacity development. We've done the customized ACPAC training. Uh, we've sent their staff to AFO8 courses. Uh, we've done some policy writing in terms of uh, housing finance. Uh, the uh, HR uh, policy uh, was recently developed uh, with them. Uh, and uh, we're now uh, looking at some governance training for their chief and council and senior management. So the fund has uh, been there to improve their internal capacity in finance uh, and uh, again develop the, that three-year plan uh, separate from their capacity development agreement. And, and so uh, with that, uh, certainly from our perspective, uh, that same opportunity would be available to any one of your communities who want to take advantage uh, of this approach to housing. This uh, original, uh, uh, Lance Arnold is the senior program officer that's been assigned to work with this community to help with the implementation. Uh, and certainly uh, last year they did uh, this presentation to the AFO8 uh, conference in Vancouver. Uh, they had hoped that they would have been asked to go back to AFO8 in Saskatoon this week, uh, but we uh, uh, had suggested that uh, this would be a good success story for the Northern Housing conference uh, 10th anniversary in terms of the, the fun and the northern First Nation communities. I want to thank you all for uh, hanging in there to the very end. Uh, certainly from our perspective, uh, uh, we'll be around tomorrow at the trade show. I, I will have flash drives uh, for you to take home uh, in terms of the, uh, the application process, the background information. Uh, and, and certainly uh, I do have some business cards at my, uh, on the table here if you want to grab those uh, now on your, your way out. Uh, and certainly looking forward to seeing you individually uh, tomorrow when you come and pick up your flash drives at our, at our booth. Thank you very much. Miigwech.